Oh, hello everyone, it's Huey back for another episode of Battletech playing the campaign mode with uh, the Flashpoint and Urban Warfare installed. So, before we go any further, um, I just want to delete some of those missions, as uh, these previous missions, as I had been doing. Um, as I explained earlier, I want to get as close to an Iron Man playthrough as I possibly can. <clears throat> and so we'll load that up and get into the next mission before... we'll do one mission probably and then go and see about uh, this mystery con uh, contract that we've been offered. So, uh... Yeah, because I do want to get uh, some of my skills up particularly uh, both Decca and myself uh, for, for Wraith um, Gunnery and Tactics Always going to come in handy. And having two mechs with sensor lock is not a bad thing. It's never a bad thing at all. all hands, ready for uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, let's get straight into it. So, let's have a look. And we can do a capture base. Yeah, I think that's fine. <clears throat> let's do a capture base. So let's negotiate one of six. Uh, two of eight. There's only a half skull though. Let's go for the money. Yeah, let's go for the money. And I think we can deploy as is. Alright. Okay team, let's go! So, um, we've got two tacticians, which is, this early in the game is really unusual for me, but, uh, I'm hoping it works out. Um, so far, so good, knock on wood, and I'm a poet and I didn't know it. So I've got my morning coffee ready, um, maybe, you know, because if, uh, I Oh, I woke up about an hour ago, so it is um, morning now here in Australia. And um, <clears throat> I'm hoping my I still have my wits about me. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so doing work for the pirates, which um, I don't mind doing work for the pirates as long as it's only against local governments. Because it doesn't really affect our, um, our reputation too much. All right, so let's begin the mission. Command interface initiated. Commander, not picking up any active hostiles anywhere. Place looks deserted. Let's move up and recon the facility. Once we know what we're dealing with, we can move in and occupy the depot or depot as our American friends call it. Okay, do we head straight in? I think we do. I normally, with some of the harder missions, I'm, you know, I normally head around the edge, but I think we'll just run straight in. Coordinates received. Let's keep you back here. I read you, Commander. Moving out. Coordinates received. Hmm. I think that'll work out. Acknowledged. On my way. Keep the little spider in cover as much as I can. Okay. I'm getting close now. So I think this will be fine here. What the hell? There's no garrison. Wait, we're getting something. Commander, it looks like the garrison was on patrol and they're on their way back. Get ready for multiple contacts. Alright, on our way. Oh, 
we could... Okay. I wonder if that counts. Affirmative. Uh, let's put you back here. Roger. And we've got it. <laughs> oh dear. So where are the contacts? Uh, no idea. Alright, so let's head around the edge. On the move. Moving to position. Stay in cover. I'm picking up a new sensor trace. There they are. Looks like enemy reinforcements. Looks like it was the right move. Receiving you. So we can get vision on them straight away. I think I will move the Shadow Hawk in. Yeah, let's do that. Move order received. Let's keep you back here. So what do we got? <clears throat> Fire starter. Centurion. Okay, it's only two. I wouldn't mind that Centurion, actually. Got it. God, if I could get it, that'd be great. But, I've only got one salvage. No choice of one salvage, anyway. Uh, so here's hoping. Um. Standing by. That's forest, and that's three evasion. I think I'll take that. <clears throat> Let's hit him a bit. And see how we go. Locking in all weapon systems. Oh, shot to the leg. you're up. So we're going to move away from the fire starter, I think. Yeah, it's a good idea. Pretty good chance to hit. Engaging target. Sweet! Uh, that's one injury. Uh, Good to Shadow go. Hulk next. Yeah, let's do that. I copy. Can we hit a leg? Taking the shot. No. Oh, looks like we're gonna kill him. Oh well. Waiting on you, Commander. Yeah, you can head in. Since you're undamaged at this point. Commencing Alpha Strike! God damn it. And stay down! Oh well. Glad I moved away. Ready for orders. So move around again. Location confirmed. Take off some of that evasion. Here it comes. It's fine. Wraith, 
Uh, who's got the best gunnery, actually? I think it's Glitch. I hear ya! Don't need to tell me twice! Well, we'll try for it. <clears throat> Headshot. No, no good. Oh well. Uh, you can move back around. By. Don't think we're gonna get lucky with the fire starter either. Oh, no, that's too close. Um, I might have to do. <clears throat> might have to do. Way. Yes, it is. Okay. The depot is ours, Commander. We're ready to pull you out of there. I suspect the pirates will be very pleased with this haul. Mission successful. Awesome. <clears throat> and so we got some sea bills. What did we get? Uh, so we got one part of a fire starter already. So do we want another one or do we want the centurion part? Uh, honestly, I'm gonna go for the centurion part. We might get lucky. No, it's okay. Got AC 10 though, which is really nice. But yeah, I can't complain with that. I mean, it's only a half, half skull mission, so it is what it is. Oh, and I've got a mosquito hanging around here. I'm just going to go try and swat him. One moment. Damn it, he's in a really peculiar spot. Ah, didn't get him. Oh well. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, let's have a look at our mech warriors. And we can get gunnery. Awesome. I'm going to take that. So we can now split our fire. Yes. Training confirmed, Commander. And good to go. Glitch. Hmm. Extra health? No. We'll we'll hold on to that. Ready for orders. <clears throat> Maybe we you, do Commander. get it. Maybe we do. Yeah, I think it will actually. Extra Training health. Complete. Always handy. Orders. Same with you. Gunnery would be nice, but I don't want to. Warrior training complete. I don't want to specialize in that, so uh, for Decker at least. Orders. You could probably get indirect fire penalty. Hmm. No. <clears throat> I think we'll leave that and we'll go for gunnery. Okay. So, uh, what have we got in the store here? Anything worth getting? Centurion part? Nah. I don't think I want to waste my money at this point. It's 561k. Alright, well let's go and talk to our mysterious uh, contract. 
So it traveled to Bel uh, Bel Bellerophon. Both of these are at Bellerophon, so. Hmm. And pirate lands. You know what? Actually, it might travel there to do this job first. And then we'll do the benefactor. Yep, so we'll do that. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to go for more salvage this time. Yep. Calculating course now, Commander. So 17 days, so we will probably go through a. Uh, yeah, we will definitely go through a fin uh, financial month, whatever you call it. Not to worry. I've got the financial report. Still over a million, so we're good. Okay. <clears throat> Get that little bit of extra experience is going to come in handy anyway. I do like these animations, they, and it's, I'm glad they've changed them up a little bit. Um, and they do have the option now you can you can forward through those now. But you know, it's turn turn based game, so I don't see the real need to rush. Anyway, so we're gonna have another look at the store. You never know, there might be some uh, nice things in there. Oh, quick draw parts. A whole quick draw, okay. <laughs> no, thank you. Anyway. Nah, it's fine. So, let's go back. Launch the contract. And deploy. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we get some decent salvage out of this. Okay, and after this, I think we might uh, do a little bit of RP and have a chat with our crewmates. Since we are going to be working with them for a while. So, um... We believe there's a pirate lance operating on Bellerophon. Within a region we control, all Marrick operations are at risk as long as the lance is allowed to move unimpeded. unimpeded. Patrol the area, find the enemy lance, and eliminate it. This is a straightforward battle, Commander. Finding a military lance in a backwater like this should be no challenge at all. So... I do apologise for doing the, the whole Russell Crowe voice for uh, Darius, but, you know, it's the best I can do. <laughs> Command interface initiated. We've got them, Commander. Right out in the open. These guys are amateurs. Get eyes on them and take them out. Just like last time. Good on you, Commander. Oliver out. Okay. So, do we run straight in? I think we do. They're right up there, okay. So, that's where we're heading. Acknowledged. Moving out. You can hang back as normal. Supposedly a good scout mech, except the fact that even armoured up, these uh, those spiders are made of paper. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's head up this way. Moving out. Affirmative. It's probably a good move, actually, because now should be able to. Okay, they're on that section there. Maybe we're heading to cover. Probably a good idea. 
even though they're probably a fairly light lance. Enemy detected. Unknown mech, unknown mech, okay. Coordinate received. Got it! Yeah, you can head there. On it. It's a little bit of cover. What have we got? No idea what tonnage that is. So we're going to reserve. Waiting for my opening. Damn it. So we still don't know what it is. Should we jump? Probably. Alright, here we go. Ooh, a panther. I wouldn't mind that. Alright. Gonna overheat here a bit, but here we go. Hmm. Standing by. Let's, let's take Decker over here. On my way. Not the result I wanted. But if we get lucky. Ready for orders. Um. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, we do have an obstructed view there. What if we... Yeah, that'll work. Position confirmed. Come on, take the leg out. Let's see how you like this. That wasn't the best hit. Inflicted some heavy damage. Yeah, okay. Keep telling Waiting yourself on that. You, Commander. Well, you can only use LRMs, so you may as well get the evasion. Got it. Alright, Panther goes first, I believe. No. This must be another light one. Javelin! Ah. Ow. Alright, let's Good to go. send Decker in for some melee. And I want to knock his arm off. Or at least cause some damage. Yep. Location confirmed. Putting my weight into it. Nice. Took off his torso. Still got the PPC Reporting though. Critical hit. Son of a bitch. Alright. Well, we could really wreck his day. Do I do that? Yeah, pinpoint damage. We're in with a chance. Let's go precision strike. You can overheat. Uh, let's get rid of the AC5. And one of these. So we've got an 18% chance. Or we've got a 22% chance. Let's go for the leg. Screw it. Terrible shooting, but he's dead. Enemy mech destroyed. I guess that's all that matters. Good to go. Alright, let's use your bulwark ability. So you can just hang right there. Probably gonna miss everything, but whatever. Copy that. What can I do for you?
One evasion, better than nothing. On my way. Got it. Oh yes, by all means, stop right there. Well, that hurt. Luckily, I was in cover. Receiving you. I copy. Come on, Decker. What can you do? You can do it, Decker. All weapons are go. Not a bad hit, actually. Eh, whatever. Let's <clears throat> turn you off and fire. Enemy mech, critical damage detected. What's up, boss? Oh, you just hang out, hang there like you have been, and acknowledged. Just a head and Enemy some legs attack. left. <laughs> a milk run, just as we expected. Good work, Commander. Mission successful. Well, I went for more salvage. Uh, and there's bugger all salvage to be had. Well, no, that's not entirely true. Let's grab one of each. And confirm. Although, it is experience for our mech warriors, so... Uh, which is always a good thing, of course. She keeps saying that. But anyway. Um, mech Warriors. So let's finally get you a bit more. Uh, let's see. You don't need. Well, you probably do need melee hit, to be honest. Well, let's give you. Hmm. Yeah, let's give you some more melee hit. For now. Training confirmed, Commander. Um, Waiting which, for orders. Yeah, nothing. Receiving you. Nothing. And Receiving you. We wanted to do gunnery for you, didn't we? Yeah, we did. So let's do that. <clears throat> Mech warrior training complete. And I think for Behemoth, I'm going to go for the coolant vent. After that, um, we'll work a little bit on tactics, but not too much. But yeah, I'll be going for coolant vent as soon as possible. Alright, so, uh, we're now going to have a chat with our mysterious contract person. So, let's start. Benefactor, in orbit, Bellerophon. Mr. Oliveira, thank you for honouring my request to meet. I am Anna Maria Centrello. You've heard of my family, I'm sure. Lady Centrello, this is a surprise. I wouldn't expect a member of the Canopian royal family to even know who we are, let alone approach us in such a non-traditional manner. This isn't a traditional contract, and I don't need Comstar asking questions. Besides, there's no reason to involve the mercenary review board. I already know that I want to hire you. Have I piqued your interest, Commander Wong? Hmm. My interest? Sure. But I need to hear more detail before I'm willing to commit to anything. Of course, Commander Wong. I'd expect nothing less. 
The job I have for you is relatively simple. I need you to recover something for me, and I need it done quietly. In exchange for your services, I will pay down the interest on your rather sizable loans and buy your breathing room, the breathing room you've been looking for. A fair deal, wouldn't you say? How do you know about... You know what? It doesn't matter. Just tell me what we're supposed to be recovering. This. Lady Central's image is replaced on the screen by a grainy photograph of an enormous grounded dropship. Ramshackle structures cling to it like barnacles. She's a derelict vessel, an Argo. Only one of two ever made. For over 200 years, she's been lying in, in, she's been lying in state on Exilus, a pirate moon in the heart of the frontier. I want her, and you are going to bring it to me. Yeah, and exactly how are we supposed to do that? I mean, that's a big ship, and she looks like half cannibalized for parts. Look, you can see her ribs in the photo. I'm as enthusiastic about money as the next guy, but I'm a mech tech, not an aerospace engineer. I'll be damned if I can get that flink thing flying again. Relax, Mr. Vatanen. I have engineering staff in hand to attend to the Argo. Their leader, Dr. Farah Murad, has built quite a reputation for herself on the frontier. You'll find a jump ship waiting for you at Alloway. It will carry you to the pirate moon, where you'll clear a path to the crash site. Dr. Murad and her team will go to work on the derelict, and you will protect them until the work is done. This should be done. This should be all well within your capabilities, Commander Wong. Unless I've come to the wrong company, of course. Uh, okay. Pirates don't scare me. I thought the worst of the inner sphere has to have offer. Then I could see no reason why you shouldn't accept my offer. Do the job well enough, and there'll be more work waiting for you upon your return. Mr. Oliveira will never find you a better opportunity than the one I'm offering. Commander Wong, I can promise you that. She isn't wrong, Richard. We're looking for a lifeline. I think this is as close as we're going to get. Um. Okay, ready, Centrella. You got yourself some mercenary. Very good. I will afford your contract to Mr. Oliveira. The stories of exports in the inner sphere are well known to the magistrate, ma magistrate, Commander Wong. You built quite a rep reputation for yourself. Let's hope you live up to it. Contract for Lady Centrella's der derelict recovery job is ready for review in the command center. We should follow up when you think you're ready. Well, <clears throat> first, what I want to do is go to. Let's go to the command center. Hey, Commander. Pull up a chair. Oh, thank you. I'm all ears, Commander. Yes, I want to have a little talk. Commander Wong, what's up? Good job finding us the new contract, Darius. It looks promising. Thanks, but I'm not sure I deserve the credit. I mean, I put the feelers out like you asked me to, but I didn't really find Lady Centrella after all. A at all. It'd be much more accurate to say she found us. There could be either a huge stroke of luck or a giant red flag. I guess we'll find out when we touch on, on touch down on Exilus. Uh, got a few minutes to chat. I'd like to catch up. Yeah, sure. I've got time to talk. Before any of this started, you worked with the Arano Royal Guard. Tell me about it. It was more than just a deployment, it was a full campaign. High Lord Tamati gave us a job back in 19 when we were supposed to be assisting the Royal Guard to round up and eliminate the pirate clan on... Jaldo? Commander Markham thought it would be a, a easy money, and it turned out anything but... It was a dozen mech warriors in three months of, of the Jaldo campaign. Had to hose them out of the cockpits. We'd have been... Uh, would have been more if it wasn't for Siraju. He saved our people's asses on more than one occasion. Went out, his, went out of his way to do it. <clears throat> and the thing is, he didn't have to. We were under his protection. 
We weren't under his protection. We were hired help. A lot of people in Master's position would have used us as cannon fodder, but that wasn't his way. He treated us as, treated us as if he were his own. He was a good man, Richard. As good as they come. Hmm. Tell me a bit about yourself, Darius. Rick, where are you from? I grew up in Nassau Heights. It's one of the hab stations or orbiting Artru. Thirty decks of economic stratification with the corporate suits on the upper decks and everyone else crammed into the lower ones. <clears throat> My old man was a dockhand who lived in deck 28, two levels up from the bottom, with the other st station maintenance personnel. Twelve hours a day, six days a week, my dad would load and un unload cargo shuttles, vacuum seal sealed quillar and nutrient, nutrient paste for people like us, and luxury goods for the suits upstairs. The old man must have unloaded a thousand crates of Castledun eel roe, plump, succulent eggs the size of melon balls. Never got to taste any though. Any one of those tins would have cost me ha half a year's wages. <clears throat> hmm, I don't. Oh, okay. Anyway, Richard, I don't want to saddle you with my life story. Suffice to say that I that I got an eyeful of what I didn't want to be on Nassau Heights. And I did what I had to do to change my circumstance. By the age of 16, I struck it out on my own. I left that station with a handful of skills, an enormous web of contacts, and a rack sack full of expensive caviar. And once I made it off Nacelle Heights, I never, ever looked back. Okay, well I'd like to talk about something else. Be my guest, what do you need? few co uh, questions are about running the company. Sure thing. Be happy to help. What do you need to know? You know, actually, I probably... I think I work it out. It's, it's fine. That's enough instruction for one day, Darius. Thank you. No problem, Wraith. No problem at all. Okay, got to run, Darius. Bye-bye. Catch you later, Commander. Alright, so. Let's have a little chat with Darius. So next... We'll go have a chat with Yang. What can I do for you? Hey, boss. Can I get you something? Are you feeling any better about our prospects now, Yang? Sure, I guess. It's hard not to feel better after a chunk of your debt has been cleared. That said, I wish it had happened in a different way. I don't like bound to royalty in the best of times. I'm not sure I trust Lady Centrella. Hell, I don't trust any noble. Present company accepted. But that's why I ha have a division of labor, isn't it? I don't have to like Lady Centrella or even, a even pretend to. As long as I go on fixing battle mechs, I'm golden. Hmm. Tell me a little bit about yourself. How'd you wind up with this crew? And that's a long story, boss. Shortest version I can give you? I signed up after I served my, served my term in the Third Succession War, fighting for the Compelling Confederation. You want to know more? You can ask ask whatever you want. Otherwise, let's get back to ta talk and shop. <clears throat> so where are you from originally? originally? I already know this, but... Brian in the Confederation. You may have heard of her claim to fame. The Crowley Lizard Cow. No? Well, trust me, they're delicious. Anyway, as the story goes, Bryant was a really nice place once. A tourist spot with big hikers and fishing enthusiasts. Pale blue skies, ad emerald green seas, and a booming ab agricultural business. You know, the, w sh the works. I never knew it that way, though. Stefan and Mars got... got to it a couple of centuries before I was born. And well, that was that. <clears throat> As the story goes, Bryant used to have these enormous orbital mirrors. Storm inhibitors, they call them. Starlake put them in place. When Amaris took the system in his civil war, he had his troops use them for target practice. Without those mirrors, Bryant reverted to its natural state, a miserable little ball of windblown dirt, effectively hostile to human life. By the time I came along, 
The only places where people could live relatively safely were at the planet's poles. Of course, you can't fit a, a planet's entire population in a handful of cities at its poles. There isn't enough space, no matter how far you dig down or how tall you build. A lot of people, mostly the poor, died in the early days. There's still a lot of overcrowding in Bryant cities even now. That's my child home, childhood home in a nutshell. Way too many people jammed into a tiny claustrophobic, claustrophobic space, with nowhere to go but off planet. I cleared out of there as fast as I could and never looked back. Gotta admit though, I do miss the taste of lizard cow. Ah, oh, tell me about your time in the mir military. Who you serve with? Oh, the second St. Ives Lancers, the first battalion under Major Ling. We saw more action than most. The, ar the arm is a, su a souvenir of my time in the service. I lost the original back in 3010 on St. Loris. You know, when we first arrived at St. Loris, I loved that place. It's an agricultural world, sort of breadbasket for the neighboring systems. Green fields, rolling hills, you get the picture. We just walked out of, out of hell on Kittery. The, red f the fed rats drove us out in 05 with our tails between our legs. So it looked like paradise to us. I remember kicking back in the mech bay, my free feet propped up on the engine block, sipping on a s s nefter of ambergris vermouth. Not a bad way to spend a sunny afternoon. Anyway, it turned out the Federated Sons weren't done with us yet. We were barely a month into our deployment when they sent the to hunt hussars to burn us out. I'm sure there were sound strategic reasons for House Davy on the once and Loras, but it sure felt personal to me. Long story short, one of the scouts managed to slip through the perimeter and hit my mech bay. I was tinkering around in a Centurion's custom-made rumble seat at the time. Being surrounded by all that armor is the only reason I made it out alive. Still, didn't make it out unscathed. Lost my two favorite assistants and, and my own right arm. And I've got this ugly thing grafted onto me as a reminder. And yet, here I am, doing mercenary work for a living. Some people never learn, huh? So why you leave the Caparan Confederation? Not that my tour of duty was up, you mean? I don't know. It's just time for change. Besides, the place wasn't for me anymore. In a way, it never really was. I learned a lot from my time in the service. Got a first-hand view of the elite bullshit that, the, that saturates compelling culture, and how it rewards high-born idiots at common people's expense. Speaking as thoroughly as a thoroughly common man, that didn't sit right with me. <clears throat> when my tour of duty was over, I packed up my things and made a beeline for the periphery. It seemed like as good a place as any to find a new beginning. So, so for what it's worth, I'm glad you made that choice. You brought my mech back from the brink more than once. Heh, <laughs> way more than once if memory serves. Still, I appreciate the kind words. And for what it's worth, I'm happy to be here with this crew. Going career military would have been an enormous mistake. You'll never really get away from aristocracy, Yang. Here, I was born a noble. Yeah, but you're a competent noble, and you aren't afraid to get your ha hands dirty. At the end of the day, that's all I really care about. I wonder how many times I watched talented engineers get passed over for a promotion so some idiot with a title could advance. Too many to count. Well, in your position, I probably would have done the same. Let's talk about something else. Yeah, let's. It's been a fun trip down memory lane, but I'm sure that we both got more important things to worry about. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so what do you need? Oh, uh, you know, that's that's okay. I think that's enough talking for now. I gotta get back to it. Talk to you later. I'll be here if you need anything. Okay. Alright. So now we're going to talk to Samiri. How can I be of service, Commander? Well, I gotta hand it to Darius. He did it. The EXO found us a client. Whether she is what she claims to be remains to be seen. But she's a client, and she has money. That's a start. 
So, you got any thoughts about working for Radio Centrera? I think she... I, <clears throat> I think she's rich. That's the only qualification a client needs in my book. It's funny. There was a time when I'd find working for Centrella unthinkable. The ma magistracy of Ganopus doesn't make the best reputation where I grew up, but in the grand scheme of things, childhood prejudice prejudices are no match for economic necessity. Hell, I'd work for Stefano Maris if it paid well enough. Well, I can see why the mercenary rife uh, appeals to you. Yeah, kind of wear it on my sleeve, don't I? Whatever, we're all in it for the money. I just to choose to be honest about it. Well, I'm uh, going around talking to the crew, correcting stories. Tell me something about yourself. Well, I'm from a noble family like you. We're old money. Made our fortune in Razzlehag, then repatriated to the Torian Concordat. That's where I grew up. I'm not sure if this kind of st is the if this is the kind of stuff you were hoping to hear, but we can talk about whatever. I'm not shy. So where in the Con Con Concordat are you from? I grew up in New Vandenberg. It's a nice enough place, I suppose. Do you like birds? Oh, no, not particularly. Then do yourself a favor and avo avoid New Vandenberg. Avoid it like the plague. Something like two-thirds of the native fauna has feathers, flutters on the wind, and splatters its excrement across every available surface. Naturally, the original colonists adopted the feathery little monsters into their culture, and those of us who came after it were kind of stuck with it. Statues, fountains, murals, you name it. Just a giant feathery pile of screeching alien birds. If the system had a motto, it'd be Squawk. Hmm, I got that picture. You sure? Because I could keep going. I hate birds. That's what I'm saying. There may be a that may be an unpopular opinion for a pilot, but I'll stand by it until the day I die. So, where did you run to a pilot the Rapid, anyway? The Torian Naval Institute on New Vandenberg. Well, amongst other places, it's a big campus. The low gravity training station orbiting Lompoc was my second home for a while. TNI flight training isn't usually an op op uh, open to civilians, but my parent had good credit back then and could name drop Protector Kaldurin. Cal That'll get you pl pretty uh, pretty far in the Col Con Concorda. For a while, anyway. The other cadets in my class weren't especially happy with sharing air, air with a civvy, but they couldn't say much. I was nobility, and they weren't. Everyone short, sort of kept me at arm's length, so I had plenty of time to concentrate on my studies. I got my certification in both dropship and jumpship operation in four years. I even tried working on a commercial jump crew for a while, once upon a time. The people were fun, but it wasn't for me. The ratio of flying to violent jump sickness skewed hard work, uh, skewed hard in the wrong direction. So, what can you tell me about the house Maya? You're looking at it. My parents are both gone. Blood cancer and heart disease, respectively. Both treatable, but they were out of money at that point, so into the ground they went. Ditto, uh, ditto my brother David, who ran off to serve in the Third Succession War and never came back. I'm no stranger to Ross myself. Yes, I'm sure you're not. Nobody is, really. It's a rough galaxy. David was 13 years older than me and had a foot out the door before I turned three. And my parents, well, they raised me by proxy in the traditional noble fashion. There was no real bond there. Even when I was young. None of us none of this is to say that my folks were bad people. They weren't. They were just doing what they knew. Their upbringings had been outsourced, just like mine was. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about my family. They're gone. I'm here. The end. So, you got another question? Or should I get back to my duties? So your family came from Roselhag? It was a long time ago, but yes. My parents told, my, as my parents told it, we were landowners on Pomme de Terre. 
It's an ag agricultural world, sort of a breadbasket for the Draconis Combine. And yes, I know that pom de terre means potato. My ancestors came from, a, from the planet Potato. It took some time for me to accept that, but hey, here we are. Oh. Oops. Right, let's go through that again. Anyway, moving on. House Mine's holdings were meagre, but the value of that land was astronomical. For minor nobility, we were really wealthy. And then the Third Succession War broke out, and the political uh, rhetoric got ugly. House Meyer didn't want a single part of what was happening, so my ancestors emptied their accounts and ran. As a rule, House Curita really takes a dim view of nobles who cut and run. Words like traitor and defector start getting thrown around. In the Combine, you don't really want to be on the receiving end of allegations like that. I wouldn't be standing here today if House Kaldoran hadn't granted my ancestors asylum in the Concordat. In all likelihood, House Meyer would have been wiped out before I was even born. Hmm, well, that's very interesting. I'd like to talk about something else now. Be my guest, what do you need? You know, actually, I got to get back to it. I talked to you later, okay? Good day, Commander. Alright, so there's a little bit of RP. And uh, I think that is going to be a good place to leave it there. But before we do, let's um, have a look at the contracts. And so that is to Alloway. And that's back to Detroit. So we look at the star map. <clears throat> and let's see if they're on the way to one another. Not really. What's the challenge on this? Urkarin, no. I mean, I guess we could go there. You know what, no. Let's go straight to... Let's set course. Let's do it. Calculating course now, Commander. We may as well do it. So, on our way there, do we get... I didn't check our uh, experience, actually, did I? Yeah, I did. I did. What can I do for you? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So, let's keep going. So, we'll get there just in time to beat the financial report. Banging noises draw you to the shared mech warrior barracks where you find Medusa disassembling one of the leopard's internal walls. There are already several panels neatly stacked beside him. He pauses and then explains, There's a few cubic meters of dead space back here, I'm making room so we can stretch out, stretch without hitting the bunks. As reasonable as it sounds, the banks aren't going to like you modifying their property. Medusa Technician, make the change easily reversible. Huh. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. You look over Medusa's work. This is a temporary change, yeah? Medusa blinks and quickly nods. Yes, Commander. You say the word and I can have it back the way it was in 90 minutes. 120 tops. Good as new. You nod. Good. Carry on. However, in the future, you will get signed off before you start anything like this again. Are we clear? Yes, Commander, he says. So morale increased by one, which is great. A little bit of a boost of morale is always welcome. So I think that's uh, yeah, a bit of RP just to uh, finish off that, uh, that episode. Uh, it was quite nice and I quite enjoyed doing it and I hope you enjoyed hearing it. We've still got uh, a few days to get there. And here we are. Bellerophon. Have we been to the store here? Looks like we've arrived, Commander. Yeah, let's visit the store first. Da, 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 da. Nothing here. Okay. Oh, so we actually paid for that. 
Alright, well, we're there. Let's have a, look, a quick look at any contracts that might be available first. Because I wouldn't mind doing those before we get into it. So, we've got a Marek Lance and we've got a Pirate Lance. So I think doing these two in the next episode, then going on to this mission, would would make sense, actually. So I think that's what we're going to do. But until then, um, I'm going to leave it there. So uh, until then, I hope you can t all take it easy. And I hope you like the video. Uh, please consider giving us a thumbs up and a subscribe and a, maybe even dropping a comment. But uh, until next time, folks, take it easy and bye for now.